I'm here, and today I'm here to let you know that I'll pass out a state for WWDC 2012. Hey guys, this is Noah James Gallup here. Not Apple will announce Apple did do with the iPad 3, the iPad, like I just said, and most of all. What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and we just landed in San Francisco and we're gonna be heading to the Apple event at the Apple headquarters tomorrow. So today we just spent the time like exploring the city. really excited to actually visit the campus for the very first time to see what they have at WWDC 2022. I've been to San Francisco many times. Uh, most of the time it's actually just been a quick one day in and out and this trip is no different, but it's just a great city to be able to stop by, check out all the places and it's just a quick flight home. So I hope you guys are excited for some of the product releases that are gonna be coming out and we're also gonna be doing a quick recap of what they announced at WWDC right after the event tomorrow. Hey guys, so I'm with Jade Gavel here, and today I've got the overall coverage for you guys of so the WWDC main keynote just wrapped up, and it's been really cool to be able to walk around the Apple campus for the very first time. I've literally dreamed of being able to attend an Apple event since I was a kid, and we're just outside the Steve Jobs Theater. Uh, Tim Cook just stopped by, got a picture, and everything. And let's just go ahead and talk about some of the new updates that were announced at WWDC's main keynote today. So the first thing was iOS 16. The biggest update in my opinion is the fact that you're able to unsend messages. I feel like that is a great feature. And on top of that, there are also features such as pay later, which allows you to have a 0% interest method of making a purchase and paying it back over a six week period. The biggest update in my opinion though is the lock screen. You have a lot of customizability now and a lot of that is optimized not only from a visual standpoint, but also from a functional standpoint of being able to focus on specific tasks and set different modes that you're able to swipe between on the home screen. You can also match lock screens with your focus settings and the focus can filter tab groups in Safari, conversations and messages and events in calendar. iCloud Shared Library also saw some improvements that allow you to share photos and video seamlessly with up to five other people. Having a live collection that live updates is good for teams and families. So to round things up, I think the biggest game changer in iOS 16 is the lock screen customization as well as the messages features. The thing that I was most excited for though was the M2 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. New hardware, especially with Apple Silicon, is something that has made a huge impact on our own workflow when it comes to editing in 4K and 6K commercial grade resolutions. And the M1 MacBook Air is one that really impressed me in terms of being able to edit with such a small form factor and with a fanless design. The new MacBook Air is 20% smaller in terms of its volume and it comes in at a weight of 2.7 pounds and it comes in four different colors as well. My favorite one by far is in the midnight color, which almost looks a bit like a dark space gray. It includes a liquid retina display that is 13.6 inches thanks to a smaller edge design and is also 25% brighter at 500 nits. The camera inside is also a 1080p full HD resolution that has two times better low light performance and you also have two Thunderbolt ports on the left side and a MagSafe port. The fast charging through the MagSafe gives you 50% charge in 30 minutes and the other side has the headphone jack and you also have Touch ID that is located on the top right of the keyboard. I think this is a very good upgrade to the MacBook Air, not only because of the display, but also in the chipset performance with the M2. But I also like the fact that you can charge your MacBook while also having multiple available ports and this is all with a fanless design that is ultra light. So this right here is the brand new MacBook Air and this is the midnight 
midnight color. You can see it has like a very sharp, strong color to it. They have everything lined up right here. And as we mentioned, this is the new design that is 20% less in terms of its volume and comes in at a weight of 2.7 pounds. The new Apple M2 chip has up to 24 gigabytes in unified memory, 20 billion transistors, 40% neural engine, 50% more bandwidth, an eight core CPU, and up to 10 cores of GPU. And it's able to do ProRes encode and 8K support. You have to remember that this is essentially the new baseline for the Apple Silicon lineup. So when it comes to the pro offerings, they're going to be coming in the horizon. That is something that I'm so excited for, but just in terms of the performance, if you're someone who edits videos on like a MacBook or like a MacBook Air even, you're gonna be able to do like 4K, 6K, even 8K resolution with the baseline chip. The MacBook Pro 13 inch also has an upgrade and that is a computer that has the M2 processor, the same design as before. And I think it'll be a very good option for people who may not need the power of the 14 inch with the M1 Pro or M1 Max, but at the same time can really benefit from the performance and the active cooling system. So aside from a big name change, macOS Ventura features a lot of continuity features. I think that was the big theme throughout the software and that is to allow you to be productive, but also utilize your phone or computer or tablet on a day-to-day basis while being able to interact with all the devices as one. Outside of editing video software, the place I probably spend the most of my time is in emails. There's over a hundred thousand emails in my inbox and there are two types of people. People who check every single one and ones who leave tens of thousands unread. So some of the key improvements in emails include being able to undo send quickly, schedule send, and also remind yourself for a follow-up. My favorite update in Safari though is shared tab groups. So say you have a group of friends and you're trying to plan a trip, figure out where to stay, you can actually send messages, set bookmarks, and also start a FaceTime call all within Safari. Apple Passkeys is also a new way to store your passwords and utilize the encrypted setup and biometrics to be able to log all of them. And Handoff has also made its way to FaceTime, which allows you to hand the call off from one device to another, hence its name. This is actually something that I do find myself wanting to do more often than not, especially when I'm on like a work call and want to switch from my computer over to my phone to demonstrate something. One feature to cap it off though is the ability to use your iPhone as a webcam. So you can use that high quality camera and Apple has partnered up with Belkin to make an accessory to use that for conference calls. Another area that we also saw a preview at WWDC is the CarPlay of the future. And this is something that I'm personally really excited about because you guys know electric cars have been a huge part of the channel, especially in the last year. And one thing that is very much in common is that electric cars often have very seamless designs with giant screens. And in fact, the most recent car I reviewed was a Mercedes EQS, which features two 12.3 inch displays and a huge 17.7 inch main screen in the middle. So with CarPlay, Apple is looking to take it beyond just that main screen in the middle, which allows you to control your messages, your calls, some apps that you might have, but instead also have widgets that you can have across your entire screen that allow you to not only customize the functionality, but also the visuals. This is something that I'm excited for and I can't wait to see it in action moving forward. So we're just about to wrap up my first WWDC and just grab some lunch here. And it's actually kind of cool, all the small details. The coffee cup even has like the latte art with the Apple logo in it. And to be honest, after visiting the campus for the first time, it is just very surreal. The way everything is designed, the continuity in the design and both what they talk about in the software, just like the glass buildings, everything just looks so good. And there's just a lot of greenery in like the middle area as you're kind of going through all the pathways of the campus. That was definitely what I noticed most being able to see where the event was and everything was just a cool experience for sure and i hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of what we we're able to show you at wwdc 2022 in terms of what i'm most excited for the macbook air is one that i can't wait to get my hands on i think the new midnight color looks so good the amount of power and like the portability is something that we're going to test because i am someone who has chosen the apple silicon m1 macbook before i switched over to the 14 inch with m1 max that whole lineup has been very capable, but we're gonna wait till we get our hands on it. And if you guys are excited for any videos or reviews, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Just wanted to get the news out. Thanks for watching.